This library was born out of the unhealthy idea of gradually destroying an instrument and recording the death process, if you will. So what I did was that I went to Amazon and then I typed in like full double bass and then I clicked the price tag and then rated all the different instruments and found the cheapest full upright I could get. Now, it's not entirely cheap to buy an upright bass. If you look here at the page, this is what there are now. I think I paid like $800 back then, something like that. But the bass came in a, I still remember this, in a cardboard box that sort of had holes in it, so it definitely not been treated the nicest way. And the neck was already bent on the instrument. So it was dead boring to begin with. And I remember just laughing so hard because like, oh my God, this is so perfect. I'm buying an instrument to gradually destroy it. And it was already death on arrival. So that's how the project began. So what we did was that we deep sampled it like in a normal kind of way with plucks. We didn't pay super attention to like fine notes or legato or anything like that. We just got like, you know, pluck notes. Then we got a fork and started sort of playing with that a little bit. We got some mallets and started playing drums on it. Then we started drilling a little bit into it. And in the end, we had this like funeral ceremony where we essentially just gradually just broke it apart and ended up just jumping and stomping on it. So this library is the culmination of a gradual destruction of an upright bass. Now, for me, I could play with it, but I love to continue this torturous idea and bring in a fabulous bass player in real life, namely Shimmy. Shimmy has been playing the bass since he was three years old and is a phenomenal player. I thought it could be so interesting to just have him play with the bass tard, the bastard. I thought this the old English movie was like bastard. Maybe that's the title of it. I don't know. What would you call it? Jimmy's gonna break it down here um, and we'll see how he uh, takes these tortured sounds into new directions. One aspect about this is that when we were doing it, I was very fascinated with the sort of percussive elements of the bass as well. So there's a variety of tonal percussive patches in it, playing the bass with different kinds of materials, metallics like forks and hammers and all these sort of different things, baseball bats, that sort of generate unique sounds that you normally wouldn't get out of conventional sort of approach to the instrument. So um, forget about like fine orchestral, delicate intricacies and think the exact opposite. This is the gradual destruction of a double bass. Welcome. Hey everyone, my name is Dan Shimolinski. People like to call me Shimmy, and you can too. I am a bassist, sound designer, and composer living in Los Angeles, and we are back for a wild one, to say the least. Bastard is more fun to say, so this is the Bastard Library, and it is one of the more wild, ambitious, and experimental avenues that SoundPaint explores. The story goes that this is, or I guess I should say was, a very, very cheap, upright bass that throughout the sampling process was beaten, mutilated, rearranged and abused until basically the thing broke. I highly recommend you pause the video for a moment and head over to the official page for this library so you can read in detail all of the things that were done to this bass. But in short, it was taken apart, smashed around, played like a drum, literally power drilled, and the result is a truly one-of-a-kind library that you see before you here. You get 46 parts with the bastard and they are all wild. <laughs> As you can see, a huge majority of them here are effects. We've got some grooves, percussion, and then at the very, very bottom, tonal, as a bass should be. I'm actually gonna go ahead and start with the tonal parts because I feel like that might give you an idea of what the instrument sounded like before all of this mutilation happened. Here's the staccato bowed part. Notice that the round robins are, as always, very, very different from one another. So that's kind of the cleanest of the sounds. Then we get to start to just hit the thing. We've got this one called Stick Mallet. Very, very cool, very useful, almost like a Colenio kind of style. We've got tonal rubber. 
really, really nice. Man, that is, that is beautiful. So funny, I'm a bassist playing chords on a bass, but I feel like it kind of lends itself to that, right? Of course, this is super useful for just like simple kind of more indie bass lines. Plucked is another example of probably one of the more natural sounding parts. finger noise there, very important. Cool. Gotta hit the harmonics, that's always super, super cool and useful. Almost sounds like a guitar, right? That's something I'm getting from a lot of these more tonal cleaner parts is sort of guitar-like. Here's what rubber grit sounds. We're starting to get into the more treated, more rough side of this library. So hitting the string just a little bit harder to get that kind of like fingerboard slap. Really unusual take to the upright bass, but these are totally useful sounds and kind of just evoke the folk genre, for me at least. Here's fork buzz, which I think literally means sticking a fork under the strings. Oh yeah, that's metal. Typically a sound I go for as an upright bassist, but I could see that being useful. Here's brushed mallet. That's a really useful sound. I think before this, I maybe would have done something where like I layered a bass and maybe a brush pattern, but it's really nice to have that in one part. Extremely useful timbre. Then we've got something called unplayable strings, which I'm not sure about this, but I believe is the strings underneath the bridge. So on the bass, you have the bridge, right? And then you have the fingerboard and the strings go all the way down the bridge and then they curve over to the tailpiece. I think that's what this part is, because if you pluck those, you get kind of a sound that sounds like this. They're certainly not tuned like that. It's kind of a mixed bag on what the notes are. So it's very cool to have a keyboard of that. Very, very neat. Oh, that's so clever. I love that. I kind of make a good ARP, right? Very, very cool. Could definitely see that being used over another element, maybe a synth element or a rounder bass element. And as far as tonal stuff goes, that's it. <laughs> Only 10 of the 40 plus parts are tonal. Everything else is wild effects with all kinds of different rich and interesting descriptors. There really is no logical place to start, so let's just jump in with all over. And I'm just gonna kinda hit a few keys at random so you can get the vibe of where this library is headed. <laughs> very close to the bridge to get kind of that nails on a chalkboard sound. 
But I mean, think about that. On its own, that's just a really cool timbre to have, but if you really wanted to get into the crazy effects and throw on like analog distortion. <laughs> and then filter that down. There's some kind of crazy amount of plate reverb. It's like shipwreckage kind of moving with the tides deep, deep under the water. That's awesome. Here's broken. I have used my upright bass as a drum in a performance setting. If you kind of hit the back of the bass kind of near the bottom of it, you get a sound sort of like that. That sounds like something's rattling. I think this is pretty deep into the breaking process. Here's horrific. Checks out. Yeah. So there's all these really, really cool sounds you can get when you just put a ton of rosin on the bow and really kind of limit yourself to the area right above the bridge and you get these really kind of nasty. Like door creak sounds. That's the stuff. We've got a kit of effects. I don't know this for a fact, but I'm guessing that this is probably a collection of all of the effects sorted into long and short. I know that Trolls really likes to think about things very quickly from a labeling perspective. Long, short, high, mid, low. It's just like, where in my region do I need this sound to be and how long do I need it to last? So I really appreciate that as a sound designer. I can just kind of dive in and see what exists under one specific heading of time. Oh. I've definitely had some beginner students sound like that. <laughs> On day one, of course, you know. Awesome. I'm just thinking about using that as like morph shell for another instrument. You're really getting the texture of the bow on the string with all that rosin cake down there. And the short ones, they're gonna be more like your kind of quick hits. That is stuff falling off the bass onto the floor. <laughs> love that. Then you've got these metamorphos kind of sounds. There's quite a few of them here. Varying degrees of beauty to ugly. I think the bowed one is actually quite beautiful. so wild. I don't even really know what I'm hearing there. This is definitely an artifact of like a slow bow to a little bit faster to give kind of a, almost like a retake. Maybe that's the transition of a down bow to an up bow. It's hard to tell, but it's beautiful. I'm glad we have a whole part of that. It's almost got like a flute timbre to it, right? I love it. Here's one called Destruct. That 
is super sick. I don't know what that is. I have no idea, but it's cool. Here's one called Detuned. <laughs> Oh yeah, that is not a healthy instrument. <laughs> Definitely a mixed bag. And then drilled, I believe they actually took a power drill to this instrument in some way. So it appears to be a one note stretch part. That's wild. I really like this one. I don't know where this comes from, but it's called organ and I'll be damned if it doesn't sound like an organ. That's an upright bass, folks. That's an upright bass. Guessing this took quite a bit of processing and manipulating, but that's such a nice timbre. It just feels great. This one's called Relent. Obviously some sort of machinery on the string. Here, shut down. Like it. And then we've got some WTF parts. So the first one appears to be a little bit lower than the second one. But super, super useful. And then it wouldn't be a bass library if we didn't have some slides. Oh yeah. That is an actual exercise you can do on the bass. <laughs> Very cool. Here's Dead Space. Reminds me of the Byzantar a little bit. All those harmonics, it just sounds like other strings kind of vibrating, right? Here's one called Dirty. I like that. This one's called From Hell. Am I crazy or does that just sound like really nice and not from hell? <laughs> Couple of them are from hell. <laughs> Definitely rough, but I mean, that's a nice, really useful bow sound. The area for this has to be probably the really, really lows. Nice. Very, very nice. Here's some harmonic effects. I, I love that. Oof. 
This one's called Riser. slow and gradual riser and I kind of like that it rises to like a harmonic place it doesn't necessarily rise on a volume place that would be very very cool to have like as a long sustain to help a very long build underneath other stuff that's happening oh, I love this one music box I make for a killer like intro into like a, a rap R&B thing <laughs> Very cool. This one's called Rattling, every actual upright bassist's worst nightmare. Oh yeah. Sounds like a popped seam, maybe. This one's called Slapped. Very, very cool. To death. This is going to be a nice one or a nasty one. Kind of in between, right? Like kind of nice, kind of not nice. Poignant, very poignant. Mm -hmm. I love the sensitivity of that, like a uh, little like vulnerable part. This one's called unable. Mm -hmm. Able to hold an even bow stroke, maybe. I like that. I think that effect is basically like pulling and then maybe doing like a circle with the bow. Kind of breaking the pitch with a little bit of that kind of rosin artifact. Oh, and then these are so cool. They are actually literally grooves. You've got one for basically every 10 beats per minute from 80 to 140. They're all so different from one another. Oh, that goes hard, man. Oh, such useful, good phrases. I mean, that kind of stuff is super, super awesome to add to maybe like some distortion on it, big reverb, put it with like some taiko drums, and it's that like weird kind of acoustic instrument, like that familiar but not so familiar sound that's just gonna keep your scene moving or whatever you're trying to do. And if your piece is not perfectly within one of these metronome markings, you have the time tool to help you out. And then finally, some straight up percussion parts. This one's called Brushed. Oh, 
Well, that's really cool. The bass is a drum, right? I love that this exists. I love that it was just literally hit master percussion of all of these other ones here. So we'll skip that for now and just go straight to rubber. And finally, sticks. That's cool. They used the entire instrument in every feasible way here. I mean, this is such a cool collection of parts. And to see them in action, let's head over to the program section where I have done about 30 of these for you. I'm not gonna go through them all, but I'm gonna hit kind of the highlights. I wanna talk really quickly about these grooves here. I kind of tried to come up with an individual groove using one note sames, parts that complemented each other to just give you an idea of what you can do with these metronome parts. For example, here's one called Bad Boy Groove. So that's using four parts here, and because it's all within the same metronome marking, you can stack them and kind of really create interesting grooves within one single part. And then I have the mod wheel bringing up part four, which kind of adds stuff in between the grooves of part one, two, and three. Here's a six, eight groove, kind of the same vibe. called gearing up. really create these like little groove engines within sound paint using all these parts at once. A more stately groove. Some heavy rock. Two more, this one's called Reflective Groove. So creative because of course it is reflecting with a little bit of digital delay. And finally here is a Rock Groove. Kiss from the analog distortion, gotta love it. But yeah, just an example of how you can basically turn this into a little upright bass groove box. This one is called Air Plump because it's kind of airy, it's kind of plumpy. I don't know, what do you think? Very, very cool. Using that metamorphose bowed sound that I love with the tonal rubber sound. So you're getting kind of that attack, that kind of clean. And then also the bow. So they work so nicely together. Yes, I'm using a healthy amount of offset here on the first part to kind of really get deep into this part. This one's called all rubber, using three rubber parts. So you're getting a little bit more grit, a little more of an attack when you raise up the mod wheel because it's bringing in that third part. How about big beef bass, huh? Let's check out the matrix on this one before we start. Just the cutoff of the ladder filter, but I think we have, yes, we have a shimmer reverb as well, which is gonna really help out here.
sounds big and beefy to me. Oh, I love this one. This one is called Brittle Organ. Oh, yes, I did. Use the new tip module here in the rack section. Rising the mod wheel makes the brittle organ stronger and more full. Let's see if that's true. So I have two layers of that organ part that I love so much, and I have an LFO going to the volume of part two, and that LFO, I believe, going to the volume is a random LFO that by default is on when you load the part, so it's kind of giving you a stutter effect on the volume, and as you raise the mod wheel, it actually pulls the amount back. I actually have a reverse automation on that amount slider there, thus making it a stronger, more fuller sound. Now that we have this tips section, I will be talking to you <laughs> through my programs more frequently. Here's one called Deep and Swirly. Lot of stuff happening there. We have three instances of tonal unable and one tonal from hell. Analog distortion, plate reverb, compressor, and chorus to give that kind of deep and swirly vibe. I'll do this one quickly. This is called Horror Hit. Pretty horrific. Drone of the Beast. This one's called Fifth Tremolo because using the detuned part, I found a one note stretch that really worked well. It gives kind of a tremolo effect. And I tuned one layer a fifth above the first. And if you do that, you have to be cautious that your second part doesn't finish before your first part. So that's why I have upped the speed of my first part to match. <laughs> Because raising the pitch on a one note or one note stretch will inherently make the sample faster, but you can counter that using the time module. You get that kind of fifth tremolo sound. I'm quite fond of this one. It's called Flicker Drone, and I'm not going to say too much. I'm just going to play it for you. break that one down for you since we've got four layers going here. So not too much going on with the effects, just a little bit of EQ, grain reverb, which is always good for this kind of modulating stuff, and then compressor. Part one is just... And part two is that, but an octave down. And that volume is on a slider. And part four sounds like this. Same thing, but down an octave, so all together now. This top part's kind of flicker. Here's a good one if you need a car crash scene, I suppose. This one's called Grinding Metal.
one tuned four cents up from the third part, and then that relent part, which is so nasty. <laughs> So you can really, really get into the grindy stuff. This one's called Harsh and Plucky because uh, it's both harsh and plucky. Oh, but it's still so warm. Here's one called Morse Drone, as in Morse Code, which I think you will pick up on pretty quickly. I love that. That's, again, one of my favorite tricks to assign an LFO to the rate of another LFO. So obviously LFO one here is affecting the cutoff of the ladder filter and the pitch of part one. And then that second LFO is a random LFO headed to the frequency of LFO one. This one's called nice mellow. And I don't know why I'm always tempted to do this to make kind of a Mellotron sound out of string instruments, but sometimes it really, really works. Trony, right? Then we've got two parts that kind of reminded me of flute stuff. So here's kind of a pan flute sound. Kind of like that kind of short pan flute kind of. Very, very nice. And then poignant flutes, which is a little more mellow. Right? That's beyond sick. Like, that is not a flute. That is not a wind instrument at all. That is three layers of bowed bastard FX metamorphose. Two of which are reverse layers, by the way, and one which is kind of straight ahead. I'll leave you with one final part. This is called soft with piano because it is the soft mallet plus tonal rubber parts mixed with a staccato part from the 1928 Steinway. And it sounds just lovely. love bringing up that rubber part because it's because a little more resonance a little more kind of like foundation beautiful and so the bastard is a documentation a record of a bass that gave its life for us. I say this a lot mainly because I think I start to really see the possibilities for all of these parts when I dive into them and program for these libraries. But it is really true that we are absolutely just scratching the surface. All of these individual sounds can be used in so many different ways. And as a sound designer, I am consistently inspired and excited by unconventional approaches to traditional instruments. And the bastard or the bass dirt, depending on if you have kids in the room at the moment, is truly such a unique take on an instrument that I love dearly. Is this library going to be a daily driver? Is it going to be your go-to on every single score? Not necessarily, but the types of timbres that exist within these parts are absolutely useful and might just give your scores or your productions the extra spice that it needs to stand out from the rest. Very excited to add this to the Sound Paint family and have it in my bag of tricks for sure. And I really look forward to seeing what you all do with it as well. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for tuning in as always, and I will see you next time. This is Shimmy signing out. Take care. <laughs>